this episode of the Happy Diabetic Kitchen, Cindy and I will share our experiences while traveling in Israel and departing the day after the attack on October 7th. Stay tuned. Chef Robert Lewis, the Happy Diabetic, and welcome to the Internet's Most Delicious Cooking Podcast. I'm here in the kitchen getting ready to explore a healthy diabetic lifestyle. I want to take the mystery out of healthy cooking and explore some amazing foods and my diabetic journey with all my successes and my challenges. Let me help you live your best happy diabetic lifestyle. So welcome to the kitchen. And if you're new to the show, I am so happy you're here today. In today's podcast episode, Cindy and I will share our experiences while traveling in Israel and departing the day after the attack on October 7th. We'll talk about our travel intention to explore the people, the culture, the food, and the wine we experienced while we were there. Middle Eastern food. Here's some background about that. In case you didn't know, in the land of Middle East, there is a crescent-shaped region that includes modern-day Iraq, Syria, Palestine, Lebanon, Jordan, and Israel, and northern Egypt, as well as all the surrounding portions of Turkey and Iran. The importance of this crescent-shaped land dates back to as early as the days of Mesopotamia. This is where wheat was first cultivated, followed by other regional staples such as beans, lentils, barley, pomegranates, dates, and one of my favorites, pistachio. This area, known as the Fertile Crescent, also acted as a bridge between Africa, Europe, and Asia, Many spices were traded in that region. The flavors of the Middle East spread throughout the world and are very common in everyday dishes that we make and in the spices you find at your local grocery store. So in the podcast, the question is, what is Israeli food? Israeli food is a variety of the Middle Eastern cuisine. Everybody who visits Israel adores the food. It's fresh, colorful. It has so much flavor. And we'll try to answer this question. What is Israeli food? The recipe of the podcast is my chicken shawarma. Well, what is chicken shawarma? Fancy a kebab. Strictly speaking, shawarma refers to something cooked on an open spit. Shawarma in Israel is almost universally good, and it's pretty much guaranteed to be fresh and thoroughly satisfying with so much flavor. Try any variety of fillings and toppings along with this dish, like tahini, hummus, pickled turnips, pickled onions, cucumber, fresh tomatoes, served in a fresh pita. So we've got a great show, and we'll be right back with our interview with my wife of 43 years, Cindy, my travel partner, and the love of my life. Okay, everybody, stay tuned. We will be right back. Okay, everybody, welcome back to the kitchen. So excited that you're here with us today. And by us, I'm with my travel partner, my wife of 43 years, mother of my amazing children. Welcome to the kitchen, Cindy. How are you? Hi, Robert. I'm fine, thank you. It's pretty fun to be in the kitchen. Why wouldn't you be in the kitchen when you're married to a chef? I The smells and the flavors are always just outstanding, and I just am so happy to be here. You're way too kind. As many of you know, some of you don't, we just returned from a quick trip to Israel. Quick 
Because we'll tell you all about that. Wasn't it an amazing trip? It was amazing. I think we went there, first of all, we went there because we were going to join a tour where we could visit some historical and biblical sites. But you and I, because we love food, we love culture, we love people, we love the wine, we just wanted to get some experiences there. So we traveled there five days, six days, I think, ahead of... Uh, the meetup with the tour group and had some pretty amazing experiences, although our timing was exquisite in that uh, while we were there, the fighting began uh, in Israel, which, you know, we expedited a quick trip home, but we did have some days there together and we did have some wonderful experiences. We did. It was absolutely amazing. And I think one of the goals for our Israeli trip was flavors of Israel, the people of Israel, the sites of Israel, and we wanted to live amongst the people of Israel. So we rented an Airbnb uh, studio apartment in a very cool neighborhood. Cindy, why don't you tell everybody about that? I think you pronounce it Nachalot. I'm sorry if you speak Hebrew because that wasn't exactly right, but we were in central Jerusalem, so we were within walking distance of the old city. We could also walk to the train station. We were very close to the Machen Yehuda market, which uh, they call the Shuk. Shuk in, uh, is uh, how S H U K is how they spell it in Hebrew. However, it, there's it's it's a word that's used a lot in the Middle East, meaning market. We we learned that that is where everyone picks up their fresh produce and, yeah. and other things as well. Right, Robert? Yeah, it was very cool. Lots of interesting people, lots of Hasidic Jews living in that neighborhood. It was the, the Jewish holiday of Sukkot. And that is one of the most special holidays of in Israel. And it's a pilgrimage. Mm -hmm. Lot, so, lots of celebration. We were visitors there, but there were other visitors there as well. Sukkahs set up uh, in the in the alleyways and outside of people's homes. You know, and if you don't know what a sukkah is, why don't you tell everybody exactly what that is? Well, during the season of Sukkot, folks will eat in the sukkah, which is like a little temporary dwelling outside, kind of a, um, it's a little bit like a tent or a, a tabernacle of sorts. And there's lots of fun happening there with family and friends and and if you're a jewish and living um in jerusalem or anywhere in the world and celebrate sukkot you eat in the sukkot you drink in the sukkot and people oftentimes will sleep in the sukkot sukkah sukkah thank you in the sukkah thank you so much so as we were walking through the neighborhoods there was always things going on in these sukkahs it was really interesting and they're everywhere they're on balconies they're in alleyways so this was a big holiday. Yeah, it was It was really fun. We also, uh, because we were so close to the market, before we left home, we had, uh, we saw on, on the website that we could purchase shuck bite tickets that were like a tasting tour. Uh, we chose to do an independent tasting tour. So our, uh, when we got to Jerusalem, we went to pick up our tickets and they were just like little tear off tabs that directed us to different locations in the market where we could pick up different tasting, um, foods and that was super fun wasn't it robert yeah that was amazing the markets were cool very crowded um very uh vibrant and the smells unbelievable it was only about two blocks from where we lived yeah. and so we flew into ben Gurion airport only one airport in the country of israel and israel is very small you can drive across from east to west in about an hour and a half, maybe two hours max, and from north to south is about six hours. So it's super small. I think Wisconsin's about 11 times larger than Israel. It was, it was pretty fantastic. So we visited museums. We did a lot of eating. We went on a wine tour with representatives from an organization called Wine on the Vine who are trying to promote Israeli wine. And we had some pretty wonderful days. We uh, had an experience uh, in the old city. We did a tour under the Western Wall. Uh, and were able to go to the hotel to the Western Wall. So we 
we uh, it was a, a an abbreviated trip, but we did pack it in, didn't we? Yeah, I think the wine trip was amazing. Let's just talk a little bit about that for a moment or so. We had a driver. He picked us up. His name was Adam from Wine on the Vine, and we went. Well, should you tell everybody where we went? Because I think you picked out the location, uh, and it was a great choice. Well, we could choose from, you know, in the northern region, south in the Negev Desert. We could, um, we chose Judean Hills and went to three wineries, the Ella Valley Winery. Azure Winery. At Zion, there was, there was, it's a two word. And, um, but the wineries were very interesting and the wine was delicious. Uh, it, it reminded us a lot of uh, the, you know, the ecosystems in California where, you know, the depending on how the water comes or how the air comes off the ocean and the different climates, just the best grapes and how they grow the best grapes in different regions. Yeah. And Israel, Israelis are also very innovative in how they have learned how to create uh, irrigation systems in the desert. And uh, I think we're learning a lot from them in these areas of our country that are becoming so arid where it's getting harder and harder to grow fruits and vegetables and they've got some innovative practices where they've learned been able to turn salt water into fresh water for irrigation and the flavors of the wine amazing cabernet and chardonnay very interesting and one winery was very close to where david and goliath had their amazing battle Mm-hmm. Yeah. The Ella Valley. The Ella Valley was awesome. So, and Robert, I think one thing that you always talk about when you are talking about healthy lifestyle ways of eating is that you have to lower the salt, the fat, the sugar in your food, which then it takes away the flavor because, you know, fat has flavor and so does salt and so does sugar. So you always say you have to bring back the flavor some way by using fresh, vibrant fruits and vegetables, you know, aromatic spices, you know, just, um, you know, foods that that pack a a high flavor. And I think we found that that was true in Israel, that there were lots of really wonderful aromatic spices, olive oil, uh, legumes, fruits and vegetables, dairy products, fish and meat, and the... The diet was very diverse. The spices, uh, the spices that we uh, found there were like cumin, turmeric, pepper, paprika, sumac, cardamom, and cinnamon. And we loved shawarma. And aren't you going to talk a little more about shawarma, Robert? I am because we came back missing the flavors. So we went in the kitchen, Cindy and I together, and we recreated shawarma which we're going to talk about it's the recipe of the podcast with all the spices that we brought back and since you talked about spices i want to just throw one out very quickly and that's zatar right which we found to be all over the 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 region it's basically a spice mixture with toasted sesame seeds dried sumac often salt and many other spices it's kind of like a universal dusting spice and seasoning zatar you can get it at your local supermarket very delicious we uh are are still having fun um creating dishes in our kitchen and i know that you're going to share that with some of your podcast listeners as well yeah absolutely and so we had a great time in Israel. It was adventurous. It was fun. The people were absolutely amazing. Um, the museums were unbelievable from the Wailing Wall to Yav Vashem, which is the Holocaust Museum. And just walking the streets and getting a sense of how people live in a country so far away from Iowa, where we live. Mm. We uh, arrived there on a Tuesday, and Saturday, which is the Jewish Sabbath, of course, most everything in Jerusalem closes, and so we knew that ahead of time prepared to have some food in our apartment that we could prepare for ourselves because we knew there wouldn't be anything open. And on the morning of Shabbat, we decided to walk to a synagogue, Mm -hmm. and on the way, so this is Saturday morning, on the way, October 7, which uh, now we all know that's when the fighting began. We heard these loud boom sounds, and I said, Robert, did you hear that? And he, you said, 
uh, yeah, it sounded like a bomb. But then, of course, we dismissed it because it's never a bomb. That sound is, you know, that's just not part of what happens in our world. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? But while we were at the synagogue during the service, the rabbi came to the podium a couple of times uh, with instructions We've received some security notifications, and we would like to um, show you where you can be evacuated into these stairwells. And if it happens again, we're going to you know, ask you to move yourself into a safe place. So the men went into one side of the synagogue, the women into the other side. Because we were separated, right? Because because the men sit on the main floor and the women sit in the balcony. So we went to our own separate uh, spots and then sure enough a couple more times uh, real security bulletins came through and we were directed into the stairwell about the second or third time Robert you and I made contact across the room and we said should we just be on our way we kind of pointed toward the door and met there and then walked home on our way home we had an opportunity to visit with some locals who spoke English to learn that this was not a typical Sabbath Sunday in Jerusalem. And so when, along the way home, too, do you remember, we kind of looked off to the uh, southwest and we could see some of the smoke streams in the sky. We knew that there was um, fighting and activity around Gaza, yeah. which would have been that area. Yeah, where and, there was and the smoke was. were missile trails, either from the Iron Dome, uh, defense system. We weren't really sure, but as we were walking back to our apartment, we could see people on very tall buildings or higher floors up pointing to the West. So we knew that there was something going on and, but the streets were super deserted, but it was Sabbath. So we really didn't expect to see many people on the street. We, we were concerned, but not afraid. We, we just went back to our apartment turned on CNN like most of the rest of the world was doing at that time and learned what was happening. Um, we texted home, although we were eight hours ahead of our family, and so most everyone back here in the U.S. was still asleep. But we began to investigate what was happening, and within a few hours, we had made a decision to expedite our trip home. Yeah, I think once the government declared war on Gaza, we thought, okay, we need to take some some action. So uh, we did call our airline to see if we could get a flight out earlier, <clears throat> and it was KLM. And they said, so sorry, the earliest flight out was Wednesday. Again, this is Saturday. So we, um, with help from family at home, we were able to get a new reservation to fly back to Chicago on um Sunday. Yeah. So we just prepared for that. We uh, packed up our bags and Sunday morning we caught a, a local train back to the train station, which then took us to uh, the train there, took us to Ben Gurion Airport. We spent a long day at the airport, never really sure if our flight was going to leave. It was packed full of weary travelers and um, people coming and going. There were people arriving in Jerusalem also. And, um, but we did, we did leave. Our, our flight was delayed, delayed, but we did finally get out the next morning at 2 a.m. Yeah. And uh, we're just so thankful. We don't, uh, we don't recommend going on vacations to spots where war breaks out. Yeah. You know, there'll be a better time to visit. But we did come home with some wonderful memories, some uh, flavors and uh, foods that we grew to love that we just are having so much fun replicating in our kitchen. Yeah. And, and prior to that Saturday, we had taken the train to Jaffa and to Tel Aviv to the Carmel Market. So we knew that because there was going to be a Sabbath where all the restaurants and markets were going to be closed. Do you remember what we picked up? We picked up, I think, shawarma, which is the recipe of the podcast, chicken shawarma, falafel. We bought uh, our challah bread. Challah bread, pita bread, hummus, and two or three different Mediterranean-style salads, eggplant, uh, tabbouleh. Yeah, it was fantastic. And Robert, what were those delicious little pastries like? They're almost sort of like a croissant with chocolate cake wrapped in. I'm sure I'll butcher the pronunciation, but rugula. 
arugula. Yeah. And so we, we did have uh, some of those pastries as well. So yeah. we were not without food in our apartment on Saturday. That's for certain. Yeah. And so, yeah, we headed home because the tour we were supposed to be on uh, with other family members who were going to meet us there got canceled. And so off we went and we were quite actually lucky to get out. Our plane was scheduled to leave at 10 o'clock in the night, 10 o'clock in the evening, but we actually didn't leave until about two in the morning. Mm. So we, we're, we, our hearts are full. We're certainly still thinking of uh, the beautiful people in Israel that have this conflict to uh, deal with, and we're praying for peace. And um, yeah, it was it was pretty wonderful. Can't wait to go back. That's for sure. Well, thank you, Robert. It's so fun to be in the podcast chair. And let's go to the kitchen. I think let's head there and. Um, Let's make chicken shawarma, shall Let's we? do it. Let's do it. Okay, everybody. We will be right back. Welcome back, everybody. This recipe of the podcast, my chicken shawarma of love recipe, is going to knock your socks off. Just a handful of really everyday spices makes an incredible chicken shawarma. Marinade that infuses the chicken with exotic Middle Eastern flavors. The smell when it's cooking is absolutely insane. So if you're ready to go, let's get cooking. So here are the basic ingredients you're going to need for this chicken shawarma dish. Cinnamon, cayenne, cumin, garlic powder, black pepper and salt, turmeric, cardamom, paprika, and sumac. Now I will have this recipe in the show notes. Simple and easy and delicious to make. So the first thing you're going to do is take all those amazing dry ingredients, mix them all together in a bowl. Then we're going to add four tablespoons of olive oil, one tablespoon of lemon juice, and sliced or chopped garlic, three whole cloves. Now, we're going to take boneless chicken. I like thighs and I like breasts. And I like to cut the breasts in about a one to two inch strips. You need about two and a half to three pounds total. We're going to take all the ingredients, mix it up really good. Mix it to coat the chicken. I like to either cover the bowl with cling film or plastic wrap and marinate two to 24 hours. The longer, the better. I like to go 24 hours. And I'll even take the chicken and marinade mixture in a Ziploc baggie in the refrigerator. Simple and easy. Now, for the sauce, you could buy tzatziki sauce at Aldi's or if you want to go a simple route simply buy the tzatziki sauce at like Aldi's or your local supermarket or Trader Joe's wherever you're buying your groceries but if you want to make it from scratch here's what it is you need some Greek whole milk yogurt about one cup some chopped garlic cloves a little sumac a little cayenne salt pepper and chopped up cucumbers okay let's put it all together now we're gonna after the chicken has been marinated overnight you're gonna take a bread pan like the kind you'd make banana bread in and we're gonna lay the chicken in the bread pan loaf about an eight and a half by four and a half inch press the chicken firmly now you've got breasts and thighs all mixed together Press the pan firmly and bake at 375 degrees for about 45 minutes or until the chicken is at least 165 degrees. Now, the chicken mixture is ready when your thermometer reads that 165, so don't forget about that. Then I like to let the chicken rest covered, drain, and discard the juices. 
Next, simply place a cutting board on top of the pan and carefully flip it over. Remove the pan and slice the chicken loaf thinly, as thin as you can get it. That's going to give you that shawarma hot off the spit look. Then, lay out all your ingredients. What I like to do is dice cucumbers, peeled, red onions, diced tomatoes, anything like that in your tzatziki mix. Some whole wheat or my favorite, I love low carb pita. You can find them everywhere. And then simply all you do is start building your shawarma sandwiches. A little hummus, your vegetable ingredients, your shawarma on top, even a little shredded lettuce if you like. Oh my gosh, so amazing. And it's great to feed eight to 10 people have yourself a Middle Eastern shawarma party. At our house, what we like to do, because oftentimes there's just two of us, we'll bag it up in baggies and freeze it. So in a week or so, if we're craving the shawarma, we just pull it out of the freezer in a pan, heat it up, cut up all the vegetables, get the pita bread ready. This is a Middle Eastern flavorful food of love. Okay, everybody, I hope you like that. The recipe will be in the show notes. So stay tuned. We will be right back. If you're loving what you hear in the kitchen, please share this podcast with your friends, family, and anyone you know living with diabetes. Type 1, type 2, or my favorite, the type 3, that wonderful loving support person please leave a comment or feedback wherever you listen it's super important so i know exactly what you like and how i can make this the best podcast ever please reach out to me at my website happydiabetic.com hit the contact link and share a recipe or a comment or a question we want you to live your best happy diabetic life thanks again for listening This podcast is not intended to replace any professional medical advice. The views expressed in this podcast may not be those of the host or the Happy Diabetic Kitchen. Always seek medical advice from a registered certified dietitian, diabetic educator, or your doctor. I'm not a dietitian, a certified diabetic educator, or a doctor of any kind. Although I have three children, Attila, Dracula, and Frankenstein, that makes me a psychiatrist of sorts. Always consult your medical professional when making any changes to your lifestyle, diet, medication, or anything going on with your diabetes. The Happy Diabetic Kitchen is made from scratch, seasoned with love, cooked to perfection. Our theme music is by the Happy Diabetic Kitchen Band, and of course our kitchen mascots are kitty cats, Scout and Tucker, who seem to always be wondering where their next meal comes from, or taking a nap. And please remember this. This year, better than last year. This month, better than last month. This week, better than last week. And this day, today, better than yesterday. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. And let me leave you with this thought. Famed American chef from Napa Valley, Thomas Keller, once said, food should be fun. And I agree with Chef Thomas. Food should be fun and delicious. Well, so long for now, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. And remember this, no one loves you more than me. See you next time, and happy cooking.